Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Magical Vox tutorial. In this one, I will show you some practical examples you can implement in your scenes using some of the materials that I covered in the last tutorial. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, to achieve some of the things you see in this video, I'm going to assume that in the render settings, under the three bars here, you have these three selected. MIS reflect, MIS scatter, and TR shadow. As you can see from this scene, um, those three settings and bloom is turned off. However, look what happens when I turn the three settings on and turn on bloom as well. Completely changes the scene, makes the clouds a lot more realistic, gives a uh, bloom on these light sources here, and just makes the overall scene just brighter and in my opinion, more realistic and less flat. So my recommendation is to have those settings turned on when making your materials in your scene so that you get a more accurate representation of what the final product will look like. Okay, so let's go ahead and try making some wood. I have this 40 by 40 uh, flat voxel object here and I just gave it a color. And right now you can obviously tell it doesn't really look like wood. Uh, so the first thing you can do is to use metal and change it and just probably leave it on the default settings and you even when you're changing stuff you still can't really tell like wow this doesn't look like wood that's because um, a lot of it is also involved with just the texture as well not just the um sorry not the texture the color of it this flat plane really doesn't show you how it looks like it shows some reflection but um, you have to actually put like act other colors in it to make it look more like wood. Okay, so after I gave it some color and uh, created this like texture looking wood shape to it, um, you can go ahead and select all the colors by holding down left click and dragging the colors you want to change the material of. And then let's change it to metal and see what happens. So it's starting to look pretty good actually. And you just want to play with these settings to refine it and make it look better. So here's a good example. This is a scene I made a while ago and right here I have this wood texture for the floor. And these are the colors I have for the floor. So if I change it to metal, you can see there's an immediate change. Now it's starting to look like laminate wood. And there's a huge difference between this and this. Um, in my opinion, this looks way better. Obviously, you can play with the settings and change it to your liking. Obviously, sometimes wood isn't that shiny, so you can make it a little rougher. Uh, you can also use blend, and the cool thing about blend is if you bring, bring the IOR down to a really small amount, and then bring the uh, change it to this cloud and increase the density, and make it slightly transparent. You can actually start seeing the lines in the wood and i think that's pretty cool obviously it is still not as shiny as i like so maybe i can bring the roughness down a little bit and increase the metallic maybe bring specular just a little bit up all right so from here i have a comparison this is what it looks like with the blend option and those uh parameters selected and let's go ahead and see what it looks like with just plain old diffuse. You can see that with diffuse this is selected, there's a huge difference. Um, the other option definitely makes the wood pop more and also changes the color and makes the whole scene just look less flat. Okay, so if you're trying to make a mirror and want to make this into a mirror, how should I do that? Well, there's actually two ways to do that. First is to select the material you want to make the mirror and then um, let's go ahead and change it to metal and it didn't really do anything right now however if you change metallic and make it pretty high and make sure you um, you can play with the IRR if you like but really that's all there is to it you just want to bring roughness to zero and bring metallic to whatever you want and you can see it's already reflecting the uh, other objects in this bathroom and the other way to do it is to select glass and Right now, uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but it is somewhat reflecting it, but not as clear as you would expect from a mirror. 
And uh, that's because the RR is set to this default setting. You just want to bring that all the way up. And now you can see it's very reflective as a mirror should be. And just make sure that these settings right here are set. Uh, set it to absorb media and then set the density to zero. Obviously set roughness to zero because if you set it any higher, it's going to make it all faded. You also want to make sure the transparency not, is not set to zero. You want to make it either maxed out or um, anything above 70 is good. Okay, but what about letting light in from like, say, a window? Right now you can see this is uh, glass, obviously. And right now, kind of set to, uh, to not do a really good job because the sky isn't set to the atmospheric scattering. So let's set that first and then play with the settings here. You can see that even with atmospheric scattering and there's like not really any light coming in, even if we bring roughness down, transparency up, change the scatter media, it's not letting any light. This is when we can use the, uh, the emission material to change that. So we're gonna actually change this to emit and we can change the emission power. Now it looks like it's starting to let in light. So that's pretty cool. Um, however, there is one drawback and I'll show you right now. Say you just want to have this like dark scene um, and you don't want light reflecting off into nothing and potentially ruining the scene. What you can do is obviously just extend it out a bit and just, just block it out like that just so there isn't any light going out that way. And right now bloom is not turned on. If you turn on bloom, it definitely changes the scene especially if you remove any other uh, secondary lighting like this light here. Let's get rid of that. So as you can see, this looks a lot more realistic. It looks like there's actually light coming in. It's like mirrors um, with water. There's actually a couple ways to make it look like water. So I have this right here. You can start by selecting glass and play with the transparency slider to however you like. And then for Obviously for reflection, you want to set the roughness to something pretty low because if you make it too high, it won't, it'll start not looking like water. So something between like maybe 15 and zero is good. Um, you can play with the IOR if you want. That, that would change how the light is reflective off the uh, water. You can also play with these settings here. I think the, um, light actually works pretty well with blend as i'll show you right now if i switch to blend and have it set to light there's even more settings to play around with you can make it more metallic which will make it darker the density will change the um for instance if you make density really low you can start seeing to the bottom of the uh, floor here and this is this determines basically how deep you want your water to look so if you make it something very high obviously you can't really see it that deep and when you do this obviously it looks kind of weird uh, that's because it's emitting some light so you can just change it to make it look a little darker and there you have some water to give off light from like a light source like a lamp or something uh, it's pretty self-explanatory just select the item you want to make into a light source and choose emit and play with the emission to see how far you want that light to go to and how powerful you want the light Let's say you're going to take a picture of this scene. You don't really look how, like how that looks. You have to combine this with uh, something else, which is uh, some other color to cover it up. That way it looks more like a um, like an actual uh, light fixture rather than just like a light source that doesn't really have, uh, looks pretty unnatural. So you can have this. Um, if you want to make something like a lampshade, you can also do this. So for instance, so I just went ahead and pulled this out and uh, covered up the sides and attached this like uh, hanging wire to it. You can left click, alt left click on the uh, part you want to make into a shade and then choose blend and then choose the uh, subsurface scattering media and then bring that density up and then play with the transparency and settings here that way uh, you can get more of that lampshade look obviously a lampshade is like you can see light through a lampshade so 
the subsurface scattering is actually a uh, pretty useful tool for using that. You can also do it with cloud and uh, glass. You can use glass as well. So after playing with some of the settings on this glass uh, material for the lampshade using subsurface scattering, you can see that it kind of does look like a lampshade. And this could be quite useful if you want to make uh, certain types of light sources. Okay, one useful uh, purpose for just using the fuse is like for foliage and stuff. As you can see, the uh, these colors are mostly being used as foliage. And if I go ahead and change it to like cloud and give it a subsurface scattering modifier, it kind of just makes it darker and it doesn't really do much to it to the scene. There could be some instances where maybe you want to make it somewhat transparent. If you increase the RR slightly, you can create kind of like this, like, wet dew effect. Uh, this is in conjunction with the subsurface scattering modifier. And, um, for instance, if you start increasing the RR, you can make it more and more reflective. But if you keep it something low like this, obviously it looks a little more realistic and it kind of creates this, like, uh, misty do effect and so even with settings like this where transparency is like almost max subsurface scattering is max um, the roughness is pretty much in the middle it can make your scene look like it's a little like wet like this is maybe good for like morning scenes if you want to make your foliage look like there's like morning dew but I do just leave it on diffuse and it still looks pretty good so for foliage, trees, plants, grass, you can probably just keep it on the fuse and it seems to still look good. Let's go ahead and try to make this scene look like it is clouds. And so let's go ahead and just alt left click and then let's go ahead and select cloud. It disappears. Uh, that's because it's at the wrong one. I'm gonna set it to scatter meteor or this cloud icon and increase the density. And depending on how big your scene is, this could cause uh, some slowdowns when you render. So just keep that in mind. And um, if anyone wants to know how to like make these clouds, it's basically just taking an object, increasing the size or however big you want, and then um, selecting the mandible shader. And then you kind of just like move it around a bit and just clump them together like so. We change the direction. And of course you can change the size. All right, and like, just like that, you have yourself some cloud. All right, so going back to this render, um, you can see that only some of the clouds got changed to the actual material. Um, the reason is Clouds have different colors, um, like just from just like how they have different shapes. There's also different colors, and so I gave some variation. So there's like three different colors here. So you're gonna alt left click on this other color and just change it, and maybe play with the density a little bit more here. Maybe you don't want to make it that dense because that looks like a really dark rain cloud. Put it to something like that, and then this other one. Then we have something like this. And if we get in and maybe focus on this object here, you can see that we have this rendition of uh, a jet fighter, in this case, going through some clouds. And this came out really well. The cloud you can also, uh, cloud material you can also use for smoke. So for instance, I have this uh, plume of smoke coming out from this car. Just go ahead and change the fuse to cloud. And then uh, make sure you set it to either absorb media or scatter media. And then play with the density settings here, depending on how light or dark you want your smoke to be. And if you think this is still too light, obviously you can change the values here and make it darker or lighter. 
and if you don't like this you can obviously go with um, this one right here and just change the density so that it's not that dark and that is how you can create uh, smoke okay let's say you have this scene here and you wanted to know how to make this kind of fog um, there's two ways to do that let's first uh, just go ahead and get rid of this um, so that it's completely bare no fog uh, you can go to the light settings all the way down here there's fog you can change the density up and now you just created the whole scene that have fog and depending on how dense you want it you can do that but there's one way of doing fog um, the second way is putting basically a cloud material overlapping the scene so let's go ahead and create a new object and give it a mandel bulb and set it to let's just make a new color actually set it to some kind of light white color and let's go ahead and make it bigger okay so you have something like this and then just go ahead and duplicate it a few times and you want to make sure when you have your object here you want it to set the order to last and then so you have something like that and let's go ahead and set the material to be cloud can't really tell right now because it's set to the wrong setting you want to set the cloud and then already you can tell it looks pretty cool it creates a really nice atmospheric effect and it looks actually really good right now you can obviously play with the settings depending if you want it less dense or denser and there you have the fog all right and for a little bonus so right here this is supposed to be water and you can see that it's reflecting here but obviously sometimes water isn't completely still like this so what if you want to make this have some sort of like movement like a ripple effect um, you can easily do that so I want to select the water object here and uh, I already made a new color. Basically, you this right here is the water uh, color I have selected. And I can just copy this and put it in a different palette, paste it, and then I have this. So I'm gonna hold down shift and click on these two. And I'm going to left click here with my region select. And then you're going to right click, hit random. And what that does is it randomly populates this whole object with both this color and this color. Currently, this one's the only one set to the material and this one's set to the fuse. So if I hit render, you can see that it's broken up pretty poorly because this obviously doesn't have material. So let's go ahead and click on this, the new palette color we created. And we're going to replicate something similar to this, but not exactly. So let's go ahead and set the glass and then play with the transparency a little bit. You can see it's starting to look pretty good right now. And you want to play with the IOR and roughness settings and obviously mess around with these. And it's starting to look better and better after I set it to scatter media and increase the density still looking a little funky so let's play around a little more all right and after playing around with some of the settings you can see it's looking pretty good now remember this won't be in the focus for this scene so if i just left click here you can see that um it all basically with little work it kind of creates this ripple effect already even though if i obviously keep out of focus it looks kind of weird however when you left click it kind of blurs the uh, imperfections and it creates the illusion as if the water is having this ripple effect all right and with that that wrap kind of wraps up the uh practical uses of materials and how you can improve your scenes with them hopefully you guys learned something in this video and i'll catch you all in the next one